Our next speaker is a quite remarkable young man that I met just about two months ago for the first time. This is Adam Bucko. He is originally from Poland. He came to live in the United States at the age of 17, I believe, and has pretty much grown up here as an American with Polish roots. He spent several years in India, during which time he came under the influence of the quite remarkable Catholic monk named Father Bede Griffith, who had adopted the lifestyle of a Hindu sannyasi and tried to work both at the theoretical and practical level at a merging of Hinduism and Catholicism. And after Adam came back to, well, already in India, he started working with homeless youths to enable them to emerge from poverty and their homeless condition and develop a way of living with dignity, with self-sufficiency. After he came back to the United States, he started a similar project here, which developed into what is called the Reciprocity Foundation. The purpose of this foundation is to find homeless youths from homeless shelters and to give them counseling, training, professional, um, professional training, and to transform them into contributing members of society. Adam will now give us a presentation on his own conception and work in the field of sacred activism. I wanted to talk about uh, two things uh, today. Um, number one, I wanted to talk about uh, the philosophy of the Reciprocity Foundation and how we work with homeless youth. Uh, it's a philosophy that grew uh, out of my own um, contemplative practice. And I also wanted to talk about uh, what it means to me to uh, to be a sacred activist, what it means to move from, um, you know, just acting in the world and uh, providing services to people, addressing issues, moving from that to becoming an instrument for, um, for some kind of transmission in those people, you know, and and ourselves as well, and and transformation, and so as. Bhikkhu Bodhi mentioned my work with homeless youth started in India. Uh, originally, I went to India because I wanted to become a monk. I spent a few years uh, here in the United States, in New York, uh, trying to live as a monk in the world, so to speak, working and doing things, and at the same time, having a strong spiritual practice. And um, at some point I decided that I wanted to go to India, enter a monastery and basically dedicate my life to, uh, to, to, to my spirituality, to my contemplative practice. On my way to a monastery I met a homeless child um, and then right after that I met someone who uh, was basically dying on the street, you know, with maggots in their body uh, and then after that I met someone else who was in a horrible condition and that experience uh, was what I think Andrew would probably call a heartbreak experience. I felt that that experience broke me into pieces and the identity that I had that allowed me to kind of relate to the world and to basically say okay this is your thing, this is what you're going through, you have pain, that it felt like it collapsed and all of a sudden the, the pain that I that I saw in those people became my pain, and I knew that I had to respond to that. And so uh, I moved into a different ashram, started working with street children in the slums of Delhi, and, uh, and eventually got pretty sick in India, came to the United States, started working with teenagers struggling with prostitution um, on the streets of different cities, especially in Florida and eventually New York. And at some point, uh, my friend and I, we decided to start a foundation that would, uh, that would have a slightly different philosophy of working with homeless kids. Uh, we wanted to uh, be grounded uh, in a strong spiritual and contemplative practice, and we wanted to 
approach social issues and the things that homeless youth were dealing with uh, from that perspective. Um, so we started the Reciprocity Foundation uh, and we began working with homeless kids and our goal was to transition them uh, out of uh, their situation uh, into uh, sustainable careers, sustainable lives where they can uh, have meaningful lives where they can do something that they love and at the same time make a living and, and, and do something that, that you know, has a good impact on our world. And so we developed this philosophy uh, after many different um, you know, experiments. Uh, and now I wanted to, uh, to talk a little bit about uh, that philosophy. First of all, we realized that when homeless youth, when they ask for help, usually they can't really get into a program or um, they can't really receive services unless uh, you know they they go through a psychosocial examination unless uh, someone uh, you know basically determines what kind of uh, problems they have so to speak uh, unless they can come with a document that basically states okay this is your diagnosis this is your problem, uh, this is the medication that we need. Um, and we decided that we wanted to do something different. Uh, we wanted to start with what we call radical acceptance. So whoever comes to us, we don't ask them for any kind of paperwork. We don't ask them for what their diagnosis is. Uh, we give them complete freedom. Uh, if they want to come to us, and every day, if they want to uh, claim a different identity, that's fine with us. Um, and the reason why we do that is because, um, you know, of the insight that I had in India. I, uh, I remember meeting a priest in India who said that, uh, he was actually talking about Jesus, and he said, look um, at the person that Jesus chose. Uh, to basically continue to, to be his successor. Uh, he denied him several times, and yet Jesus entrusted him, uh, his mission, his ministry. And, and he said something that really moved me. He said, the reason why he did that is because he realized that trusting people makes them trustworthy. And so, when kids come to us, we trust them completely. Even if they lie to us, we trust them because we believe that trusting them will awaken something in them. And that's what we see. Trust awakens responsibility. And because of that, they become trustworthy.